Hi, I'm Jamie at the Bead Gallery, and I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look on how I put together some ideas to make some earrings. I had these super cute mother of pearl fish beads, and I wanted to do something that was relevant to fishing. I was gonna make this as a gift for a friend of mine who is a fisherwoman. And so as you can see, I was sketching, trying to figure out how to make it look like there was a hook involved. You don't have to have the best drawing skills, as you can see, but I think it's a great idea to get your thoughts down for any sizing and give you a start on what you want to do. Here I'm using my three-step wrap and tap plier, and I'm making a loop about the same size as my drawing, which is going to be the hook. I'm using my cutters a little bit differently, so the flush side is pointed away, because I wanted a pointy, sharp tip. So again, the bezeled side is facing my work, which is unusual, and I'm cutting both pieces the same and now hammering it out. I'm hammering it out so that you can see the point even more. As you hammer it out, the wire will flatten and hopefully look more like a hook. And I'll show you that I'm gonna use my cutters to even get it more hook-like right here. So cutting it in an angle and cutting it just a little bit more. So if you don't wanna get poked by this, you can also take a file and gently rub the tip so it's not as sharp. Now I'm flush cutting the ends of the wire where I'm gonna turn the loop so I have somewhere to attach my ear wires. If you want it mirror imaged, remember to flip one of your hooks inward. And now I need a way to attach my fish to the hook. So I'm taking another piece of wire. This is like 24 gauge soft and I'm binding it onto the hook so that I can create a loop attachment. And so to this loop is where I will wire wrap my fish. You can use 26 gauge soft or fine, 24 gauge also works. And just wrap it tight enough so that it sticks on. Now one thing I figured out was to bind the wire first next time and then cut the sharp tip. So that is my note for the day. Another handy tip is when you cut your wires to end it, cut it so they're on the back side of your earring so that that cut end won't be seen. And now to wrap the other side, I did use a Sharpie pen to indicate where I can start and stop wrapping. That helps a lot if you want both pieces to be similar. When you're wrapping the wire around your hook, you can use the same color wire or a different wire for contrast. That's up to you. As long as the wrapping piece is soft, you'll have an easy time. Now it's time to add your fish onto your hooks. So I have two 22 gauge head pins and I'll be putting the wire into the fish with the little pin at the bottom that stops the fish from falling off. If you wanna see this technique done repeatedly and in detail, please check out our YouTube video called The Basic Wire Wrap. But I will do it here right now for you using my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna work in tandem so I work on both pieces at the same time. This way, my loops are almost sure to be about the same size. With the round nose plier, you're gonna hold the wire and bring it up over and around to create your loop, switching to the bottom jaw to finish off that loop at a 90 degree angle. Repeat that on the other side and try to pinch it on the same part of your plier so that both of your loops are the same size. With my flat nose plier, I'm gonna hold the loop, open that door, and attach it to that loop that I made earlier, and wrap it shut. Repeat on the other side. Trim off the wire at the end. Cover it with your fingers so it doesn't fly, please. 
and attach it to the ear wires. Yay, you have a pair of fish earrings that you've caught on your hook earrings. Good job. <laughs>